Hey guys, welcome back to DMAC Customs on YouTube. Dave here in the garage, old mate Area 51 behind us there. So, this week, as you've probably seen by the thumbnail, I'm gonna try and figure out this glass. So, I'm gonna have a crack at getting some templates and that sorted out so I can then take them away and get them cut and do what I need to do because the glass I've got, well, it's got some issues. Okay, so as discussed in the intro there, this is the um, original glass to the Area 51. So, you know, it's got some stuff going on. Overspray there, oh, look at that. Um, obviously cracked and whatnot. Now, this side piece of glass here, I mean, it could be, you know, cut down what I need to cut out of it for the roof chop sort of thing, and we're we'll getting rid of all of that, but we're still going to have ugly glass and whatnot. And the other piece has got like a bullet hole type thing in one side of it. Um, both the door glass is cracked and, and just no good. Um, front and rear glass, we'll have to pull those out and have a look too, I think. It's, it's time. Um, now, <laughs> Ever since I did the chop on this thing, everyone's kind of been going, what are you going to do about glass? What are you going to do about glass? What are you going to do about glass? And I just kind of, you know, had loose things. Like, they can cut that shit. <laughs> they can cut new glass. They can cut old glass. People cut windscreens down all the time. Back glass remains the same. So that's the only piece of glass that doesn't get cut. The quarter glass side uh, doors and rear I'll get new flat glass cut. The front screen is going to have to be a stock screen cut down. Now, I have got a, well, the two pieces, the front screen for that, for this, um, still wrapped up in a blanket. I really, really need to get that out and have a look and see whether it's um, any good or not, whether I need to start looking at trying to order something in from the US of A or see if there's anything local here in New Zealand. I doubt it, but you never know. Um, and the rear glass I have never unpacked since I bought this car. It's been wrapped up in a drop sheet or a blanket or something since I bought it. So I don't know whether it's all ugly like this or not. I hope not. But we'll have to get that out and have a look. But first up, I want to set about templating these. Um, the doors I think should be pretty straightforward maybe but maybe not because of the chop being three inches out of the a pillar and four out of the c pillar and then whatever it worked out to be in the b pillar uh, so it's not going to be like just cut four inches off that round the corner and we'd be done sort of thing it's kind of the the relief the piece is going to end up a slightly different shape to this i think so what I'm going to do, I think, is I've got this foam board here, which is 5mm thick, which is about the same thickness as the glass. I wanted something a bit more rigid to, to do these, and then that other bit of card there is hopefully going to start having a look at the front windscreen, maybe template that and see how that's going to cut on those pieces. Uh, but, yeah, so I've got some stuff to figure out. Okay, screwdriver to start with. Now, I looked up on the, when I was looking up the internet the other day uh, in regard to the regulators and how they go in and out. Oh, she's crusty down there. There was talk about using petrol to soften this, this rubber that holds the glass into this channel. Um, I may have to do that yet. I was thinking it might be able to just well, it might come off actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> Don't know, worry about soaking it in petrol. Can I get that out though? Anyway, so that's the glass out of that <laughs> of channel. And this one might not be quite so. Well, it might be alright. Oh, 
here. That's what I'm talking about. Now are these different? Yeah, I'll better label them. Just like that. Okay, so again with the, the same with this as I've just talked about with the door glass compared to the rear glass, you know, this relationship here potentially has changed between here and here, if that makes sense. Like, it, you know, say it used to be 90 degrees and then I took three inches out there and four out of here, it's changed this angle here, even though that's a curve. So what I think I might do is get some other cardboard and just see if I can replicate that corner as a start and see how close it is to the original glass rather than just tracing off the original glass. Makes sense? I hope it does. This, I'm, I think I'm, I'm probably overthinking this, but I just don't want to get it wrong. Okay, so I'm going to start with tracing this off and see how close it is. Have a look at the car. Well, we might be alright with that. Hang on. Might run a pencil around that. Let's see what it looks like. Try, I'll mark it out and do it again on the other side and see if I get the same kind of result. Okay, so it's probably quite hard to see, but that's my pencil line that runs up through there. And see it's kind of flaring out and it comes right up in, into that there and then it starts coming back out again. On this side, that's, that's for the left hand side, the driver's side. That's my tracing line there. And that's pretty parallel down there, so what I might do is try, try cutting that down to there and see whether it fits kind of nicer, tucks right up evenly into the window channel, yeah? that okay so that that's kind of better that's that line you know tracing around the fuzzy comes through there dips off a bit here but I'm not kind of worried about that just yet the other side is a bit more kind of still got enough of it into the fuzzy I think you know into the channel so they should be alright from side to side at this point if we look at this we square that up to there. This is the relationship that I was talking about here. This is where it gets different. So to make cut my glass, this is this curve here. The glass, the current glass curve, is going to carry on down down that way. But if I if I <laughs> come on, think, Dave, think, use your brain. If I get in here like so, start it off there. Yeah, hang on. Can I get all this on there? Yeah, we should be all right. Yep, we'll get that on there. This expensive stuff, this. So if I trace that off, give me my curve all the way. Mm. 
and then put this back up on here. suspect it's going to be in around there so a big case of like moving that up into that area but I have to work out that stuff so I might have to screw the track into place and find some measuring points okay so I've got the window winder up so I can get to where I've got to screw this track in without screwing it up <laughs> get it I'm not going to be able to do this with that lip on there let that get in there? Probably not. I might have to pull this off, get it out of the way. That's this bit here. Okay, so I've just been and cut that over that rain flap thing off. Am I going to be able to do this? Or is this going to fall in there? Okay, get those ones lined up. Should be able to get one on there anyway. You can see in there that's just those two screws in there I've just put one on each side for now but that gets my track comes up to there so I want to set this up in such a way so I don't know whether okay that's where that adjustment might come into it I wonder if I do adjust that bring that up bring that back end up and then I can take some measurements at a at a fixed point you know measure out measure up then measure out, measure up type of deal, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so, sitting my ruler in there, so I'll come out, if I leave it loose, then say about three inches, I've already put one mark, don't, don't read that one, and so from my three inch point, I'll go, you know, roughly parallel, and then so that's I'm gonna have to do this in metric, sorry fellas. Three inches out from the side. And if we go two hundred and thirty-five plus the depth of the track. So two forty-five, so we've got ten mil in the track, so two hundred and forty-five three inches out. Okay, working in metric and imperial. So we go three inches out. Two forty-five, did I say? I might check that. Memory terrible. Okay, so I forgot to mention as well, I loosened these off and then wound this up and that leveled out my track and then I just pinched those back up again. So that's, that adjustment has the window go like that. That's just those little wallet out holes in behind there, just in case you didn't know. So what I'm going to do now is come along here every, say every 200 millimetres, which is roughly eight inches and I'm going to take that same measurement so on number two and number three so, oh, here we go metric 
Number two, we should be, I'm gonna get kind of vertical, 210. And number three, let's get this in there now. Vertical into the track. You go 160 plus 10, so that'd be 170. And that was every 200 spaces. And that, that, that should give us, hopefully, a baseline for the track. Alrighty, so if I go 200 off there, 200 off there, Warm me a line. Go two hundred off there. Two hundred off there. Warm me another line. Now I should go uh, two hundred and ten off there. One seventy off there. Now, I should be able to roll a line through there, and that's the bottom of my glass. Keep going, put a ruler on those marks. We're a little bit out, but I think that'll be close enough to get us into the ball park. You know what I'm saying? So, if I did that, just do it lightly. And then, my pencil is under there. So that should be my template for that side glass. Should be being the operative word. I wonder if I should do a temporary one of those to see what that comes out like. Okay, so I just made up this little piece here which kind of emulates that corner almost. I cocked up the angle at the bottom, but if I tuck it in based on the curve, it leaves that little cutaway kind of hanging out this which I don't know why they've done it so I might initially try cutting this out but cut this straight across here maybe just round the corner and leave that little wedge in there and just see how it, how it lands I mean it's a it's only a ten dollar piece of foam board like it's ten dollars just like for something that's going to get thrown away it feels so foreign to me to spend ten dollars on something and just just throw it away it's like buying fireworks waste of money but yeah anyway so i'm going to cut this out here that'll be my baseline i think that's it so we'll we'll give it a try anyway and, and see how it goes I wonder if I should cut it a bit bigger to start with. Maybe cut it down there and just see where it lands. Yeah, I'll do that. So my science is flawed. This is no great surprise, really. What's going on there? So that make the glass shorter. I wonder if I should just get a pencil and sketch that. Sketch that curve in. Yeah, I'll be back in a sec. I'll just get a pencil. Did I bring one with me? No. Okay, so that sits about there. And that's about there. Should come down sharper. What are you sitting on? It 
should be about there. About there, I reckon. Alright, I'm just going to trim that off. Okay, so it goes in. Gets a bit snug up the top, which makes me think I've got my angles wrong down the bottom there. So, just get this out of the way. Pull it back out. Maybe feel like it's probably binding down that back edge. So, if I take a, another eighth or something, something off of that, that'll give it a little bit of that way. You know what I'm saying? I think my curve here is good. I think it's just I've left a bit too much out here. So, I'll just nick a bit off of there. Just like so. Yeah. Take the camera off and try again. Drops that in there into the channel. stop is that my window down might be hmm but I think it's still I think I could still trim some more off the bottom you know back to that line there maybe if that comes up there yeah we'll do it we'll trim that off Mm, I should take that angle off again. sitting in the track to get a true idea of am I correct in this or what is that in the track? no it's just about in the track something is stopping it bugger it that's it sitting in the track if you can see there it's like that's the window wound all the way out what's it doing out there sweet not too far i think that's pretty much on point now let's see if i can wind it down get it to stay in the track So that's it right down. So we're going to have that much of the glass protruding. I would say before a roof chop, you wouldn't even have got the glass to come down that far. I think you would still have half your window with glass visible when the thing was down. Because that, yeah, that's what I reckon anyway. So I think that might be my side glass. Just like that. Tint's a bit heavy. Mm -hmm. She looks pretty good from from there, other than the tint. Right, I'm pretty happy with that. I think that's my template for the back glass. Yep. Yeah. Right, so let's let's have a look at the door glass. Okay, so take a slightly less 
scientific approach to, to this 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 time. The, 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 the. Why? Because sometimes when I measure the crap out of everything, it just doesn't add up. But been doing some basic measuring, so just getting a rough idea to make sure we're both sides are, are pretty good. And I'm thinking if we can go 660 wide, I'm probably actually going to be slightly less than that, maybe sort of, oh, sorry, 680. This is where I keep getting muddled up. It should be about 680, but if we end up about 678-ish, it should be alright both sides. Now, the original glass is just over 680, I think. Yeah, so that's just over. Just under 27 inches wide. Um, as for why it's a, a different width now, I think it's just one of those roof chop things. I mean, this post is still in the same place here, just as that is there. This was cut through here and then welded back together about the middle, I think, but it was lengthened here. If you know what I mean, like, yeah, so when things get cut down that comes down and comes forward and that separates here and then this you know quarter window had to be bent down and stuff like that so there's all sorts of things that happened and changed and shit like that just to confuse the issue uh so what i'm going to do with this on this side is i reckon i might just trace around that i think my angle there should in theory still be the same <laughs> maybe not oh, no, now my theory's all muddled up yeah yeah i'm just gonna rough it in and then i'll trim it up <laughs> where's my pencil gone it's all you i'm not i'm gonna leave that in the car uh, Get it. So, if I just come up, actually, can I do that? No. Square it up to the side, since it's pretty square. And then, get rid of that. measure okay i'm going to trim it at my outside line for now just to be conservative you know get that out of the way and then i'll get that top edge I think this might end up being a little different because of that piece that gets welded in on the top post, but we'll have a look. Okay, maybe not. Like if I got that sitting in the channel there, if I can hold it steady with one hand, that will be sitting about there, and then over there, and then that comes up about there-ish. So, what I might do in that case is mark, get a rough measure, measure from there to there, and I might mark where those holes are and measure straight down to there, and that should, you know, get us into the into the ballpark. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna stick this. Right. So that means about there. Mark. Yeah. 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 Somewhere around there. So 
both barrels. We're measuring in line with those holes from inside the track this time. Should be yeah, there, 165. And then if we're measuring from inside the track to there, should be 172, 172. What? This doesn't seem right. 272, so what's this one then? Okay, so transferred those measurements over to here. I wonder if I should go a little bit on the conservative side again when I do my first cut and just see how it fits. So I'll cut it, I'll cut a little bit more into it just in case I trim it up. So I'll cut that line with my knife. This one, old faithful. Alright, let's test fit that. going does that quarter window have to go in with it somehow do you have to take the quarter window out to get this glass in is the question don't know probably oh, unless that way, go past quarter track. Ah. And then get stuck. Bring it right down. So get away from the, the tracks. We did into there. Make funny faces. Wonder how are you gonna do this? Can I do it by just having that loose? So I take that out. And I then this into there. Okay, so I can almost get it in there by dropping it right down, but it's just a little too wide, so I may have done some checking and stuff, and I think I'll just cut this bit off. Try it, try it again. I wonder if I need to shave a bit out of there. We'll try that. It'll come down this way, tuck it past the quarter window trap. Snap both knees on the way past. Bring it right down, get it into the side track, and there, squint at it, and then see if I can pull this back enough. And I'll get it into the window track. Should have wind it up. Oh yeah, 
later might be a bit, a bit rough. Both knees cracking. That in there? No. It's close. It's close, but pushing it up there, so I might run a pencil line around it just to see how far out it is. You know what I'm saying? Alright, back out again. Might have to look into rebuild kits for these regulators before the glass goes in though. Probably take a little bit off of here. Oh yeah, I might just shave a bit off it. I wonder if I can sand it off. Other than that, she's not bad. Alright, I'm just gonna use this as a as the template for the curve. Let's just see if I can tighten up this curve. I might, I might just cut around that. Lither off, so that should be all good. Okay, so I've got it back in, and in the in the track now down here. Hopefully you can see, and that's still leaving that excess in there. So final kind of step, I guess, is to wind it all the way down and make sure it goes down far enough. Now, I think. try and keep it in the track. Oh, yeah, so that I could actually even leave the have left the glass longer because that's it right down, and it drops right down below the level. Unless I extend the stopper at the bottom, which I could do. Yeah man, that's us. Joyce. This little template here that I've made, this is what I made this when I was cutting down these quarter window frames way back when and I've kept it all this time uh, and it was helpful in making sure I got both sides pretty much the same, pretty much, um, but there's a couple of things that make it not quite good enough. I've got to bring out this top piece here so if it's sitting nice and in that bottom corner it's not quite tall enough here so I want to be able to fill that out a little bit so I'll use this to get me started and then um, we'll, we'll trim it trim it up to suit you know what I'm saying so it's this bit up here that's needs a bit more through there and then hang on this is tricky one-handed all that in proper start with All right, she's binding up somewhere
nicht so. Hmm. Okay, so. Maybe I just need to take a little bit out of that top already. Alright, so that's it pushed all the way in and I've got to allow for tape or mastic or whatever that um, seal strip stuff. So I might actually have to still take a bit out of Oh that should be alright that way. I think. Yeah, that should be alright. What I've got to do is get that mark now. Out of there and into there, trim that. Okay, so check it out. That's that's that little quarter one quarter window vent window, whatever you want to call it. Done. I've left it a little bit more kind of play in it, or well, a bit of play in it. So yeah, you can do it with two hands anyway. You can get it straight with two hands, just to allow for whether I use uh, like an adhesive or whether I use what's that other stuff called. Um, the the kind of rubber strip stuff I can't remember what it's called channel channel tape or something like that um, to hold hold it into the quarter window or to the and into the tracks I've seen some stuff on the forums it's a bit 50 50 again on the best method <laughs> uh, honestly I think mastic will probably be fine uh, that may be a bit trickier to get out if you ever break one and you have to kind of redo it trying to get that stuff out when it's kind of been set and dried up you're just sitting there kind of cutting it out scraping it out whereas the tape i think there's a bit more scope to remove it if you need to uh but i don't know where to get that from in new zealand i did google it the other day and um there there are places that sell it but they sell different thicknesses and of course I have no idea what thickness I need I just know I'm putting you know, probably 5 mil glass in um, that's kind of what was in there quarter inch-ish I think quarter yeah but yeah so that's the side glass templates done um, I really need to now take them back out and try them all in the other side make sure they fit I've done the quarter window that's fine but the door and the back glass, the back window, I have to kind of check and make sure that they are going to work. This winds down a bit further than I would have liked, but there is that stopper at the bottom there, which will be easy to make a bump stop taller and dial that in, or even make it adjustable, you know, threaded in some way. It would be much better than trying to wrangle a bigger piece of glass and if you know what i mean so that as it stands at the moment the track comes up to down here you can see what i'm talking about and um you know that's fine i think yeah and uh i don't think it needs to be any bigger i mean you could i guess but easier to get a smaller piece of glass than, than it is a bigger piece of glass i reckon so that i'm gonna go with that <laughs> not straight away but i just want these made uh, i don't actually know have any idea what it's going to cost to get this glass cut um i did the front screen on the bomb truck seven eight years or so ago um and that was pretty reasonably priced i think from memory might have been like $180 or something like that which I don't think is bad um, but that was seven or eight years ago and everything has gone through the roof so with that being said make sure you subscribe watch the whole video suffer through the ads because then I can get like tens of dollars to go towards glass you know what I'm saying
But what I might do now is you know, have a bit of a clean up, get rid of the stuff I don't need, and we might pull the front and rear screens out and have a look and see what kind of condition they're in. Stay tuned, you'll be surprised as I am either way. Okay, so scratch the front and rear glass just for a minute. I've got to do this. I've got to put the and check them in the other side. If I don't do it now, I'll procrastinate and then probably won't do it. So this is the left door. Oh, so I didn't actually write what was what on there. Now that's the door. That's the um, rear track. And you can see how they're different. And also, another thing to note, all of the other tracks had Phillips head screws in them, except for the driver's door, which is flat heads. And it's the same with every other fastening in that door. When I got it, it had flat heads. Everything else in the car was Phillips. <laughs> Interesting. But anyway, I will get these tracks in, make sure my templates fit both sides. I really hope they do. And yeah so i'll just get ahead and do that because they all got to come back out again because as you can see there's a bit of surface rust and crap on there that needs attention and i'll probably have to do maybe some rust treatment and paint them or some in some way so yeah i'll just get that done and then we'll be back yeah g'day mate can i have a large big mac combo uh some extra fries Fillet of fish, no sauce, uh, two quarter pounders with cheese, and Sunday, or two Sundays, and, and a Diet Coke, thanks, mate. Yeah, yeah, sweet. Drive, drive through. Uh oh. It's all right, it's all right. Yeah, boy. So, uh, templates fit on both sides, so pretty stoked for that. Italian made white tints. Pretty rare, uh, you have to be in a kind of elite club to actually order them. They're not something that uh, they send out to just anyone, you know? So, yeah, anyway, enough clowning around. Uh, my templates fit both sides, so, my winder handles would. Now I need to just open the door. Yeah, so templates fit both sides, uh, which is fantastic. And what is that, Mark? Is that a oh, pencil? Um, so they fit both sides, so that means I kind of got shit right when I chopped the roof in this respect. Windscreen might be a different story. But yeah, so let's get that other glass out windscreen glass and rear glass and have a look alrighty so this is my front glass and this is how it's been for the last know, four years or whatever that I've owned this car so I've never actually opened it and had a look before maybe duct tape I'll find my knife Okay, so one piece. Oh wait. God, the birds are getting noisy around here. This is the driver's side, there's a couple of sweet marks through here. I don't know whether they'll polish out or not. Right. It's the date on this newspaper. New Zealand Herald, Thursday, December 8th, 2011. So this glass has been wrapped up for 13 years. <laughs> All right. Hmm, interesting, very interesting. That's an old New Zealand registration sticker from 1992. 
makes me wonder whether this front glass is actually even from this car because I spoke to the guy who imported the car they never got it legal on the road here in its original form they did drive it on the road but not it wasn't vinned or complied or anything like that so that's telling me that this glass was is not from this car which means it may not fit because if I'm correct me if I'm wrong but I think fleet line and convertible glass is different to the four-door glass and I know the guy I got the car off he had some four-door bits and pieces as well like the seat that was in it when I got it was a part of me a four-door Chev Deluxe seat so it was the non-tipping one which was no good to me so what I'm gonna have to do with that in that respect then is make a template for that see whether it'll fit it's just whether the curve is still the same I'm pretty sure the differences between the glasses was height wise which may not be an issue for me since I'm gonna be taking some height out of it but yeah so I don't know I'll have to figure that out now Alright, so this is the rear foliage growing in it. This, this might be the real telling towel. Yeah, wash that, take that upstairs. Oh, another towel. Oh, that one's a bit rough. Yeah, that's all right, I think. These scratches and that on it. Probably from ice scrapers by the looks of things. But there's heaps of scratches going like this, right across this back glass. Um, I don't know if you can polish that out. Yeah, you might be able to bring it back to a certain degree, but some of them are can't see from that angle but none of them are like crazy deep there's just lots of them oh, some of them are a bit deeper I would say it's come from a snow state and they're um, snow scrapers ice scrapers where someone's going to <laughs> I would expect some sideways though but unless it was just one person who had a habit of scraping one way and they had a thing on their scraper that's done that but yeah, I've got it. It's, I was worried that it was going to be all delaminated. Actually, this isn't laminated glass, that's why. It's not delaminated. It's probably tempered glass. So if it smashes, it'll just go into a gazillion pieces, maybe. Don't know if that makes a difference. But yeah, I wonder if I should pull the rubber out and have a look at that. 49 to 52 windshield rubber fleet line with molding. Does that mean? Ooh, was that a bug? Yeah, dead bug. It means where's the molding go? I don't know. Let's lay this out and have a look. So I think I've got this rubber figured out. It, it naturally wants to kind of sit like that, um, which is kind of weird. But it actually goes onto the glass like that I think I had it worked out before over at the car so that's the bit that goes into the channel that's the glass and then there's another thing for the molding is there maybe not maybe I'm getting confused now I've got to figure this out again okay so I think this is how it fits in here now there's another slip there for the molding which is this which by all accounts you've got to put the molding on before the rubber now I don't know whether there's joiners or what which I don't have and this side's been a bit brutalized um, <laughs> and it's oh, what's going on there yeah hmm 
yeah, so that's, I think they're the rear mouldings, so. Yeah, so that's the, the wrong way around or what? Okay, so yeah, that that's the moulding for the back glass. Now, I don't know what's going on there, but they're a bit chewed up on the ends, as I showed you just before. And they have a kind of a, almost a T-shaped profile. So they slot into this groove here, which is kind of hard to see. <laughs> Trust me, that, look, yeah, so they go into there. And there's actually all sorts of shapes and stuff to help hold them in there so that's uh pretty much how that works simple way eh? um but yeah from what i've sort of seen and heard is that you've got to you've got to put the moldings on before the glass goes in so you put the rubber on the glass the moldings into the into the glass and then you can install the glass into the into the the hole if you know what I'm saying but so before I can do any of that I've got to obviously clean these moldings and that up try and straighten that one out and you can see witness marks there that there is some kind of center clip I don't know that I've got them like I know I'm missing one for the front glass as well but it's ah <laughs> uh, yeah, I can have a look through everything again, but I'm pretty sure I went through it all a couple of times and anything like stainless clippy things like that, I'll put it all together with uh, in this box a lot of it. So I'll check in there and make sure nothing's taped to any of these other pieces that I'm not, not using. But again, I'm pretty sure I've been through all of that as well. Um, in the past <laughs> Trying to figure that out. So we've got some molding similar setup for the front glass as well um, but Yeah, so I don't know what to do now whether whether to put the back glass aside until I can that might be a whole nother adventure but Maybe look at the front glass and see what it's going to take to template that See how far out it's going to be you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, might do that. Okay, so this is the front windscreen rubber. Brand new, already broken. Um, now, I mean, I've been, had that stored for what, four years or so. The guy I bought the car off, he had it stored for, yeah, from maybe from 2000, maybe, maybe it's been stored 10 years or so since he bought it. I'm not sure when he bought it and and whatnot so i don't know exactly how old it is but it's gonna have to be cut down to, to fit anyway seeing that it's broken there that's where i'm going to make my changes actually works out probably quite good i just don't know where to where they glued it oh they just sort of glued it i don't know was it one piece it's been glued obviously you can see you know where it was joined at one point i think um it's not a one piece molding unless it was a, a second and it's been modified but yeah i'd say that's a join through there hmm interesting um but yeah so i gotta now figure this one out so i can work out how, how it all works. So that's the inside. So that's what'll go into the pinch weld, I reckon. No, so that's the inside. Yeah, so that's. Oh my god, no, gracious me, I have no idea. No, ah, that'll be the molding there. So yeah, so in there, there's a little kick there. And that'll be where the molding locks into it. So that, I would say, would be the glass. And then that would be the pinch weld. But is that rubber? Ah, oh, yeah, I see. Looking at the car, if you look at that little step down, that rubber's going to sit in that little step down. I'll show you. Try to anyway. So that. 
in that. Like that. That's the glass goes in there. So the glass, looking at that, will pretty much go to the inside of that pinch well, roughly. So I need to make a template to that, I reckon. I'm just going to do a quick and dirty trace around this just to get me started. Let's see how we go. Should be to get me in the ballpark, taking about that much out of there. You know what I'm saying? Let's do that. Got an idea. I'd like to put a little bit of this. Help hold it in place. To complicate things even further, when this got cut, got cut three inches taken out of here, and then pie cut here to tip the posts and that in to kind of realign with the, the roof part. So there was a little pie cut taken out of there and the three inches taken out of the pillar tree. Yeah, three. And so, yeah, to get the roof, all this to line up again, that had to go that way. Um, I don't think it went any other way. I think it was just that way. So, how does this work again? So, that's that. So, that also means there'll probably have to be a bit taken off that side to make it all work. Thinking if I trace around it from the inside, that should get me my approximate size. But I might take a bit more off of that so I can get it to lay in against the pinch well for now. Mm -hmm. Can I get to that? So I'm going to take a bit out of there. About there, and then come back on the inside into where someone's left all this shit lying around, and then we can do a bit of a tracy trace around there. Uh, <laughs> I think that's it. That's it. I don't know, this is kind of a bit of an experiment just to see kind of what's going to happen. Yeah, pretty much in line with that, that rubber seems to be so the glass sits over that slightly. So I've kind of got it a bit short at the moment, which is fine because it's a little bit close over here. So what I think I need to do is have a little bit of clearance all the way around um, just for ease of installation because if you look at this rubber here so this is the glass channel so you'd have hang on I'll show you it's about the same thickness no, it's a little bit thinner but this is our glass it sits in there and then we have that stainless molding that Kind of hooks in over the top and then that goes into yeah pinch well so oh what am i talking about I'm talking about this thing the center bar the center bar that's the outside if we figure out mark on there so there's not that much actually sits inside that rubber Sorry, this is real awkward. I didn't plan this at all. There's about that much sits inside it. So that means there's, you know, about that much sitting on top of that bar. And the bar is about that wide. So yeah, the glass sits on top. So it needs to be overhanging it a little bit. So I think that's our yeah pretty much our template for our for our glass could probably take a bit more 
out of it. Could I? Let's see if I can pop it over a bit. Hang on. <coughs> oh. So that's about there. That's about there. Oops. We need that. Anything else? It should be about right, I think. Maybe a little bit, little bit shy of that. A little bit shorter. Maybe through there. Hmm. I don't know. With all that waffle now being said, if we set that up about there, it all still runs relatively square to there. And then over here. That's what we would have to sort of air up, seal it down, take out out of the, the sides, you know. Like I say, I'm, I doubt that this is actually fleet line glass in front of this. So what concerns me now is what's going to happen to this curve at the top, where it goes from the pillar and curves around. I'm not, I don't know if I've got a way to kind of measure that. You know, it's all well doing it on a floppy piece of cardboard. If I cut this and it doesn't fit, it's no great loss because it wasn't going to fit anyway. But should I have been cutting it from the top down? You know, is that curve the better curve to follow and that one's not as much or, or what? I'll go and hold the glass up and see what it looks like. It should sit. Up there, maybe that makes it a bit longer. If I bring that back, so that's in the right place. To there, then yeah, I'm definitely going to be cutting out through there. Then if I let that go. That's, that's sitting even across the top. I wonder if I should get a pen and maybe a pen. Trace that, just draw it on there and see how that fits with my template, you know? It's not gonna, that's, that's not gonna be no good or no bueno. Yep, we. I'll go and have a look. Right, moment of truth ish. Okay, so my upper stuff looks kind of about right, but this is where it's getting a little screwy down here. So that I may have got this short, whereas I'd be better off to you know, cut it to there. And if I have to, then you can just cut that off the end, if that's not too much of a small piece to cut off, you know what I mean? So... Maybe I need to add a bit back onto that, make it more like my pen marks for my initial cut. Or do I bring it right over, get that full curve in there, that full corner in. Take that off, take that out. And then do a centre trim last. I don't know. I don't know. Never done this before, so yeah, kind of excited, keen to have a crack at it. Um, I might try cutting up some of that flat glass first and just see <laughs> how to do it, let alone doing the curved stuff. So, watch this space, it's not going to be in this video, but it will be in a future video, hopefully, coming soon.
Um, yeah, but I won't be cutting the side glass. I'm going to get someone else to do that because I don't carry it in stock. So, what next? thinking what are you doing now but I had an idea to see how I could keep the shape of this to kind of create my um, you know template and to see how, how close this is going to be so that's what all this is about that's got to go on there and through there This is just approximate, mind you. Okay, so let's see. We've got that things in there. Got to overlap it slightly. It's not bad. I'm not sure that it is curving round enough, but this isn't terribly accurate either, so I started it at that end. Is that going to be? A, is there enough flex in the rubber to soak up a little bit of that? You know what I'm saying? Let's it push it back that way. Bear in mind it's like almost five millimeters of glass as well, so this could, this could work. <laughs> it could be bloody better. <laughs> well, I reckon we might be on to something. That might might help us. Yeah, so I mean I have my little kind of you know bucks to try and hold this aren't super accurate considering that's still kicking up as well so um the only way to really tell is just to cut the glass and see how it goes so not going to do it today like i said before i'm just mincing things around in my head trying to figure out how it's going to be done if it's going to be done and get these templates all made and of course that one there and just start figuring out this glass business on the old Area 51 project and uh, that I pretty much I think I have done God I sound so uncertain but <laughs> I am <laughs> so uh, uh, yeah templates made glass figuring out underway mess made and uh, yeah but progress. I've been pondering this sort of stuff, all this glass business for for ages, years, two or three years now on the old Area 51 project. 
And uh, yeah, look at that. Actually, looks quite cool with my um, custom Italian-made white tint. But yeah, so I've been, you know, the side glass I've never thought was going to be too much of a problem. Problem as long as I got both the sides the same when I did the top. And yeah, appears to be my template seemed to work both on both sides. So that's a, that's a plus. Pretty happy with the back glass. You know, it's not all kind of weird and gone all strange and stuff. It's just got scratches in it. So might have to do a bit of research and see if that can be polished up. Um, just to try and take some of the scratches out of it because when the sunlight hits them, it just can white out your windscreen and stuff like that. Even though it's the back, and probably won't be able to see much out the back anyway, but it would be good. Uh, and that front glass, like I was saying before, that's a New Zealand registration sticker from 1992 on that piece of glass. So which makes me think I haven't got the Fleetline glass anyway. I've got deluxe four-door glass because there's a lot of early 50s four-door chevs in New Zealand, right-hand drive versions and stuff, you know, back in the day. So a lot of them just got rolled, bowled and arsehole and, and sent down the scrap, you know or down the tip, or down a ravine, or into a river, and shit like that. So they didn't survive, So, but they were here new. But I don't know of any new right-hand drive fleet lines that were in New Zealand, any two-door stuff. It was all four-door stuff that I know of. So there may have been a car parted out, or the guy, I um, can't remember his name, the other guy that I bought the Area 51 off, he may have parted out a car for some bits and pieces. There wasn't much. To be fair, there was the seat, front bench seat, and a couple of other bits that I suspected might have been from a donor car. I can't even remember what they were now, but but yeah, so could have been that glass, ironically. All this time I thought it was like special fleet line glass that I had stashed away at the back there, but yeah, I think it is just four door 51, 52 glass. Check it out, you yeah. know. That's the NZ motor vehicle in 1992. You can see a bit of a number there. Uh, yeah, you can actually track, if there was more of a number, you can actually track the car that that was registered to. Um, if you are looking to get a car back on the road that has been deregistered in New Zealand and been off the road for a long time, if you can find an old proof that it was on the road at some point, rego sticker, warrant sticker, VIN, stuff like that, if there's anything to prove that it was once upon a time already registered on New Zealand road, it does make it a bit easier. You don't have to go through quite so much compliance. It's still a re-VIN, but it is slightly easier, I think. I don't think it'll make, it'll make that much difference. But anyway, that's just useless information that you guys don't need. But that's all for this video so as always thanks for watching very much subscribe like share comment all that kind of good stuff and uh yeah don't forget we're on facebook instagram and trying to keep the videos a little shorter around the hour mark so this one might not excite a lot of people but it's part of the process custom cars <laughs> Yeah, you should probably cut the glass before you do the final chop. Make sure it fits. I don't know, but yeah, I'm doing it backwards. I didn't have that opportunity. But anyway, that's enough waffling on. Till next time, take it easy and peace.